Hey guys, welcome to the We Need to Calm Down podcast. I'm Devin. And I'm Joe. And this is the show where we talk about all things Taylor Swift. That's right. This is the show where two friends finally get together, talk about the best pop singer, the artist of the decade, the, I think, artist of the year. Is she artist of the year this year again? I think she's nominated, yes. Oh, gosh, she's just insane. Uh, Taylor Swift, that's who we're talking about. Uh, yes. And always talking about. We'll be discussing everything from song breakdowns, Taylor news, and our insane fan theory. So speaking of Taylor news. I was going to say, we've been speaking of Taylor news for so long, and ja- there's just so much. She just loves being in the news. Oh, God. It's insane, because, like, I know, like, with Reputation, she went on a blackout. So, like, I'm, I just added, like, Taylor tweeting notifications to my phone. So every time she tweets, I get something. And I'm, like, expecting to get one every other week maybe mm-hmm. and she's just like blowing up twitter like she is like very active now which feels weird it does feel weird because the vibe that you got from folklore was i'm i'm thinking she's stepping away mm-hmm. but Especially at the same the lakes yeah but at the same time she's just like well hey guys i'm re-recording all of my old music here's love story so yeah, so that was or a big a snippet tweet that of came it. in the other day. Um, Ryan Reynolds asked Taylor for uh, a, her re-record of "Love Story" for a Match.com commercial uh, that he created. That was, I think, it was pretty humorous. I liked it. Yeah. Um, I probably have watched it about thirty times just to hear the re-record of "Love Story." Um, and I texted Devin, and she was in a meeting. <laughs> so this is the first oh one of those rare times that I found out news, and I was like, Devin, 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 did you see? Did you see? Did you see? She's like, Joe, please leave me alone. I'm busy. And I'm like, Devin, you don't understand. <laughs> this takes precedence over everything. Um, but no. So what are your thoughts on this? Because I have so many. I think it sounds well. We talked about this. The implications in general of what That's this one go. clip gives us, but overall, I mean, I think it sounds really good. I think she sounds older. Mm. I don't think she has that childlike nature to her voice anymore, and I don't think she's trying to recreate that. I think you know, like she said, she's trying to make these songs sound better if she can, and so I appreciate that. I just, it feels weird kind of to listen to it. Like it's really, it's, it's, it's nice to listen to it, but I feel like, I don't know. It's like her revisiting her past. I really enjoyed it, but I'm like, I wonder if I'm going to be like, this feels off. Cause it's not the original. It's never going to be the original. It's so funny. Did you say that? Because to me, like, it feels like the original, like mm. I, I could find I, granted i don't i'm not that in tune to my ear as we'll learn later in this episode and as i've always known my entire life but i can't really tell a difference uh i mean there is a difference don't get me wrong there is a difference and if you really listen for it you can but it's so close to the original that i actually do think i could forego the originals and just <laughs> listen to the re-records which i think would be so really could exciting. i yeah i could forego the well, originals well but... that was the thing is we were we, when we talked about this mm-hmm. in our episode we were like are we going to be able to do that? Is she going to make them different enough that we, there's no reason to not listen to the originals because we still want the originals. If she's still, if it sounds exactly the same, we might be able to get through that. But there are a couple of implications that I, that I laid out about this real quick before we go into the, the meat of this extremely long episode we have built for you guys. Sorry, a little bit of a uh, preview. Um, number one, this could mean if she is doing by album and in chronological order, this could mean she's already finished recording uh, self-titled. I don't think this Which is, is likely. Which is crazy. I don't think so. I don't think it's likely, but that is a thing that it could mean because then she's already on Fearless and Love Story, recording Love Story and Fearless. It could also mean that she's just not going in chronological order and for some dart throw of a reason, she decided to start with Fearless. Maybe because it was her big, one of her biggest albums with her, her biggest hits that everyone knows mm-hmm. could be that reason. Um, so she could just be randomly starting and doing all of Fearless first. Who knows? It, but I think the most likely thing that makes me really happy is it could also mean she's just not recording the, the albums. She's just recording a mix of her favorite songs and putting them in a new order, a new track list and a new quote unquote album. Maybe she names it the same. Maybe she doesn't. Um, There are some problems with this. Like, again, she wants to own her discography, but Mm -hmm. she doesn't, I don't know if she's ever said like, I want to own this album. She said, I want to, she always says, I want to own my songs. 
So I don't know if there's some like connection to her that she wants to keep the album titles. I don't know if there's some logistics that says she can't do that. Hmm. Um, I don't, I don't think there is, or there would be, but there might be. Um, but I know what we were discussing it. That was our big thing was we were like, Holy crap. If she just releases like the breakup album or um, the, the bops album or like, like, now that's what I call music 76. Um, like, I don't know. Like if, but I'm excited to see what this means. Cause like, it is random. Like, I don't think she has all of self-titled done yet. There's no way. Or it could also mean that she's just, I'm literally re-recording every single song and you're going to get all of them at once. I'm not going to space them out, mm-hmm. which also doesn't make any sense from a marketing standpoint at all. When you can get what, this is like two, three years of press and market and and being in the headlines why would you just waste all of that time and just put it out all at once it just makes no sense from from a financial here's here's the thing with marketing i don't think i mean you can drag out the releases because i think fans will be interested but in terms of press i don't think this whole re-record thing is going to be something that we're still talking about in three in terms of like in three years i don't i don't know if it's going to be like I don't know if it's going to be the same story, but it's going to be like, hey, like, I feel like we're going to get announcements from BuzzFeed of like, hey, 1989 has been re-recorded and now it's out. Hey, Reputation has been re-recorded yeah. and now it's out. Here, how does it stack up against the original? Or here are the bonus features that came out with it. Or mm. like, because that's the other thing is, again, yeah. like we said, if with Love Story, it is almost verbatim. It's very difficult to tell the difference. She didn't really change anything. But then and if that's think- the case is she going to do these bonus songs, bonus content that is like an incentive for people to buy these new albums that isn't just support me? I think she has to, because if not, are we not getting new music for however many years? Yeah. Like I, it, at the end of the day, it's something she has to do. It's something she's doing for her and hoping that the fans will do it. But Mm -hmm. if we're not going to do anything for it, we're not going to be incentivized to buy it, to listen to it or anything like that. If you're not giving us something out there, I mean, I'm incentivized to do it because in preparing for today's episode, I've been listening to, I've been going to Spotify, going to Taylor Swift and just clicking play all. And if you do that on Spotify, you just get so many like big machine radio talks about Taylor Swift songs. And it's like, I don't want to hear big machine. One, I don't want to hear a radio talking about Taylor Swift, let alone big machine radio. Like that's not what I need right now. Like, Mm -hmm. and it made it, it, brings that guilt up it makes me feel like god i hate that i'm listening to these and supporting them so i don't know i'm excited yeah i'm excited regardless i'm here cur- i'm very very curious to see how she does it i'm i'm really curious to see when the first one comes oh that's what i was gonna say before so you were talking about how you don't think she has all of speak now or not speak now uh, self-titled done but you have to remember she's not really reinventing the wheel no. Like the, the lyrics are all there. The production is mostly there. She just has to have people learn how to play it and then go. But so I, so, I don't, I don't think it's as long as a process as you think it might be. I don't think so either. I just don't. Do you think like she started in November? Do you think she got all of that done in a month and is on to self? Like, do you think, wouldn't she like release? Like what, when, what, what I, I don't know what a release schedule is. I think she definitely has more done than we think. I would believe it. I would believe it. So maybe maybe she actually is just done up to like red or something right now and just is waiting to release them. Just like coming up with a, a release schedule, a marketing plan for it. Yeah. It could be that. Because also, I don't know if like, I don't know what the, I forget what we said on the actual episode, but I don't remember what the actual logistics of it was, was if it, um, if she could release them after november or if she could start recording after november she because, should be able to release them because we have no, i mean i know she can but yeah. i'm saying like if it was release and not she could have already been recording them earlier this year like mm. and then just like wait like and release them so i don't know if it's start recording or start releasing i don't remember the exact terminology yeah. um but do you have anything to say else on that? Because I know that was like, this is like a big news that was really fun. We had to talk about it in the beginning of the episode before we get into what we're actually talking about today. I think I'm pretty good. All right, Devin, what are we talking about on this typical Tuesday night? All right. So we've said it once and we'll say it again. 
Before a Taylor Swift podcast, we are a bridge podcast. So today we'll be taking a trip into Bridge City where we break down the idea of a bridge, discuss what they mean to Taylor, and then debate our favorites. I I have to mention this here because the the original title for this episode was All These Bridges and We Still Can't Get Over It. Uh, and that's how we came up with this episode. Uh, and we're really excited. This episode is actually, I think we're going to start doing a series, like not like a, not like in a row, like just whenever we, whenever we have time, we'll do an episode in this series. I think we're calling anatomy of a song where we break down different parts of a song. So we like teach you guys like what goes into for this episode bridges, what goes into a bridge, what makes a bridge a bridge, because I've been asking Devin questions like this outside of the podcast since we started this podcast. Uh, there is so much about songwriting, compositions of songs and things like that, that I just do not understand. And I think it'd be really cool to not only to one, learn about those things sans Taylor and just know what those things are. So when we're listening to Taylor music, we get a better appreciation of them and then go in and talk about how Taylor utilizes that in her songs and what, what to look for specifically in a Taylor Swift bridge or a Taylor Swift verse or chorus or however we want to go. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the first in the series where we break down this part of a song, which is the bridges. So the I'm best going, part. I'm going to <laughs> preface this by saying I am not an expert. I got my degree in music, not music in general, but music industry. So I don't have the complete expertise, but I like to think that I'm pretty knowledgeable and I did do some research on it. So let's go into what is a bridge. So a bridge, like we talked about, is a section or a part of a song similar to a chorus, a verse, it's just the different structures of a song. Uh, you wrote in this definition from <laughs> Masterclass, so I'll just read that out really quick. The bridge typically happens only once towards the end of a song, usually between the second and the third chorus. It's a change of pace in the song. It stands out both lyrically and musically. The point is to jolt the listener out of their revere and remind them that there's more to the song than just repetition. This can be achieved through something like switching to a relative key in the same key signature from A minor to C major, or through something like a guitar solo. <clears throat> so in better, easier terms to kind of understand, <laughs> uh, a bridge is basically just this musical passage that connects two sections of a song while providing some kind of contrast that lets you know you're in a different place. Like a tunnel going through a tunnel. Just constantly tunnel. going back to that. Like a car going through a tunnel. Like a car going, a through, a going through a tunnel, yeah. So typically, uh, bridges are only last four to eight bars. Uh, that's why it's also called the middle eight. For those who don't know what a bar is, it's just a measure. So if the song is in 4-4, four, four, that means there's four beats per measure, and those beats are quarter notes. So it's like one, two, three, four. That's one. Yeah, I didn't know that. This I, the, We yep. tried to do some data for this episode, and uh, your boy got crazy frustrated because he did not understand anything with this and i like we were trying to count bars well joe and, was counting lines off of genius and i'm like number one you can't trust genius. we're getting the genius later okay yeah <laughs> and so he's like there's like four lines and i'm like joe the the bridge is like eight measures long and he's like what does that mean and i'm yeah. like let me just do it, it, it was a, it was a whole thing <laughs> so typically the lyrics in the bridge are different and then it's also different musically uh, most bridges start on a different chord so if there's four chords or something usually a fifth chord is introduced or if the song has three chords that fourth chord that you haven't heard before kind of sets the scene of oh this this sounds different where are we going um, I feel like it's always E minor it's always E minor or A minor for me. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm playing a Taylor Swift song on guitar, the bridge is all, it's always like C, F, G for the, for the regular like sections. And then it's just E minor or A minor. It's the sad notes, it's, the minors. It's, yeah, it's the sad notes that come out in, in Taylor's bridges. <laughs> if not new chords, you sometimes hear uh, new instruments and in solos, uh, a new tempo is introduced, maybe even a new key in terms of key changes. It's the only part of a song that doesn't repeat 
So you don't, you never hear a bridge twice usually. It's typically just that one time. And then there's a lot of different purposes or reasons why you would use a bridge. So it can be you're adding variety and variation. Uh, you're creating this tension and then release, which is something that Taylor does a lot, or building energy in this anticipation for what's to come. There's a dynamic shift that can be created, uh, shifting the emotional impact of a song, which she does a lot, and then providing a new perspective or closure to the song. You're just, you know, this is all from one section to another. So if you have verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse done, or verse, chorus, outro, you feel like nothing new was provided. So when you bring in this bridge, it adds this new level to the song or new information that you didn't have before that kind of helps. It gives you this resolve or it gives you something that you didn't know needed to be resolved later. Uh, not every song has a bridge. Some Taylor songs don't even have bridges. Uh, and then we have very common structure of a song is verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. I was trying I to that. translate it from A, yeah. B to verse, chorus. I love that because like when I took poetry courses, like we always did, like that's how we did rhyme schemes. This mm -hmm. is A, B, A, B, C, C, B or something like that, like yeah. sonnets and stuff like that. And I love that structure. Yeah, so for those who might not be Taylor fans, which I don't know why you're listening to the podcast if you're not, but welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you yeah. for listening. So if you are a fan of the Beach Boys, you know Good Vibration has one of the highest regarded bridges because it just goes completely in this like 180 direction. You're like, where am I? Is this the same song? You would think maybe it's two different songs. And then it just brings you back into the dun, 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 good vibrations. It's, you need to I listen to it. I don't think I've it. ever heard this song. You <laughs> all right well i'm gonna yell i might, I might have later. heard it i might have heard it but just not no i don't know anything about the beach boys you've definitely heard the song before i i probably have okay anyway so I'll, I'll i'll i should have done that before we started recording before we get into taylor and bridges do you have anything to say about bridges themselves um i i generally i think like maybe it's because of taylor but i always gravitate towards bridges i think we are spoiled as taylor fans with bridges um but there is something like, um, number one, I think the coolest thing that I linked to this after going through this with you is um, if you listen to Bo Burnham, he has a really funny uh, song. He has a lot of really funny songs. He has a really funny song where he makes fun of country music. Mm -hmm. And um, he just basically goes line by line, like to, to showing you how generic country music can be. And, or at least stadium country music is I think mm. what he called it. And he has like a point where he goes, you want something? How about a key change? And then he just like changes like the thing. And it's, that's exactly what like this kind of is. Is like you get, mm -hmm. you get that feeling from it and you, and it's so fun to see it like broken down and, and dismantled in that way. Um, but yeah, that's it. I mean, other than that, like this is mostly me learning because I don't know yeah. anything about this stuff. So tell me about Taylor Swift and Bridges. Okay. So before we get into why they're relevant to Taylor, let's just discuss what she said about Bridges. So Taylor herself has said, I love a bridge. I love a bridge so much. I love like trying to take the song to a higher level with the bridge. So she said that when she was being interviewed on Lover, just the, the song, not the album. Aaron Desner has said this about Taylor's bridges. Um, he said to her in the recent folklore special, you also traced the bridge when I heard the bridge and then you traced all this weird timing and the chord changes. It just felt like, okay, we can do anything. We might be able to do anything or something. And it pushed the collaboration forward. And they talked about that with peace. And <laughs> that makes so much more sense when I tried to figure out what the bridge was and how many measures it was because the time signature is crazy. I think it's like two, four, but the layers of instrumentation on top of it just make it sound so uneven. And he says the weird timing and chord changes, it's just crazy to think about i almost had joe try to figure out the measure i told him i'm like thank <laughs> god i didn't tell him how to do that song because we, we can like, talk about that real fast like so we we have some data that we went over and my my initial thought was i'm gonna count how many lines are in uh each bridge that she's ever done and see if there's like a like a variations 
and and Devin was like, no, do bars. Like it's so much better to do bars. And I was like, okay. And I tried to figure out bars. And I'm like texting Devin, like Devin, help me. I don't know what to do. And and like, I'm at work. She called me. She called me at work and was like, da 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 da. Like teaching me how to do everything. Then you sent me a one, video. Two, three, four, <laughs> one, two. You sent me a video of you doing like Apple Touch or something, mm-hmm. like a touch message. So I would get the beats coming up on my phone. I'm just like, Devin, I can't figure this out. It was one of the most stressful times of my life. <laughs> I don't even know if a, if Taylor has a song in three four, but I would not let you. Ooh, no, I'm not about that. All right. So what did Jack say about Taylor on? Stage? So Jack Antonoff on the same special, they're talking about uh, August and how this was Aaron's first time working with Taylor and now he's finally understanding what it's like so Jack says it's a weird experience to work with you Taylor and now Aaron can understand it it's like here's the song wait here's the bridge and no, wait here's a better bridge okay now it's a perfect bridge and then here's this thing after the bridge and so obviously if you've listened to August you know exactly what they're talking about but so honestly those- it goes with every bridge she's ever done <laughs> I tried to find more quotes about Taylor just talking about bridges, but I couldn't because everything I found was people just ranking her bridges, Mm -hmm. which we'll get into later. But anyways, so why are bridges so relevant to Taylor and what sets her bridges apart from other artists? So Taylor has been known to make a fantastic bridge. We'll discuss that in greater detail later. But from her background and her love of trying to take a song to a higher place, she has set this expectation for herself to have a great bridge. And I don't think she ever really disappoints. And I think just the sheer amount of fantastic bridges she has is really what gives her that competitive edge. Her lyricism in general is crazy, but then I think her lyricism and then the emotional impact are two things that really set her apart in her bridges. Those are two of the big themes. You get either get crazy lyricism or you get crazy emotion. And then in the great moments, you get both. Mm -hmm. And so the bridge elevates the story to new heights. It emotionally cuts deeper and then it ramps us up for that last chorus that she has. I think it's, I think it's so interesting because we were going over this and we, we picked out all of our, our, we picked out a majority of our favorite bridges, which honestly is her discography. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, we were going through before we started recording this and like narrowing down, like cutting down bridges and everything. So we're like listening to these bridges and like, and like for me specifically, I just like, those are the parts of the song that I just remember more than anything else. Like, and as soon as they come on, like we just start, like I just start dancing, getting into it, singing it. Like you really just start feeling it. Even songs that I haven't heard for a while, even songs that aren't my favorite. Like you still just like the bridge is the part you just get into. You remember. And I think that's, I, I think there are some bridges that I like more than their choruses or that are even more yeah. memorable than their choruses. I wouldn't say like more because there's a lot of verses. Like choruses are probably one of my least favorite parts of a song. And that's so funny to me because in a traditional pop sense, when you look at other pop giants out right now, their bridges are nice sometimes. But at the same token, like, do you really remember like an Ariana Grande bridge more than a chorus? No, I always remember the chorus or Ariana Grande, Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, um, even Halsey, like who is, uh, we did our Spotify, I got my Spotify wrapped, Halsey was my number three artist. I don't remember any of her bridges. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing that, that really stands out to me is like, I, I think as someone who's like, I, I listen to a lot of music, I really like music and I like all kinds of music. I like rap, rock, temp, uh, everything, literally everything. And I didn't even know what a bridge was if it wasn't for Taylor Swift. Like Taylor Swift yeah. is what made me understand this part of music. Otherwise, I just thought it was like, oh, this is just like a breakdown or this is just some other part of a song, a denouement, something. I don't know. But I never knew what a bridge was until like Taylor, really. She just has such a strong reputation, pun intended, <laughs> for bridges. That's just, she's just very highly regarded for it. People, no one expect this from her, so she has to deliver. And there must have been, I think I counted like 30 some songs we picked out for honorable mentions and just in general that we had to whittle down. And it really comes to- <laughs> And what did we whittle it down to, 20? <laughs> probably. We, we have to talk about how 
and maybe I'll go into this a little bit later, a lot of her bridges tend to be similar in theme, like mm-hmm. thematically. So that's why you see some and not all. Like we can say, okay, well, I really like this bridge. However, this song does that bridge better. Yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot of what we were saying the entire mm-hmm. time. Is there? There are some that are very similar. They're they're equally good. Don't get us wrong, but they're just so similar that we had to kind of bounce it off. Mm-hmm. Um, whittling down a top five was very very difficult, and we just had to do a million honorable mentions. So I have a little bit of data. I did something for this episode. I promise. Of course, Joe has data. <laughs> um. Not not as in-depth as I usually do, uh, but this one was really interesting. I'm going to like back up a little bit because I'm afraid of Devin right now. But according to Genius, um, Taylor has a total of eight songs out of her entire LP discography. So I'm only, only counting the eight albums you see above me uh, if you're watching the video. Um, the Only her eight traditional release albums, only eight songs of them. Uh, do not have bridges. Uh, Those songs are, according to Genius, so little asterisk there, uh, tied together with a smile, which just goes verse, chorus, verse, chorus, uh, outro. Mary's song, Oh My, 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 just goes verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, outro. Ready for it is just verse, pre-chorus, verse, pre-chorus, verse, pre-chorus, refrain is the end, ends on a refrain, which is a new one. I think... When, we'll, when we talk about refrains, we'll get into this more. That might be the first time we ever see a refrain in a Taylor Swift song. Um, then we have Endgame, which is chorus, post-chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, post. <laughs> it's just like, it's such a weird one, but that one was very easy to know. There's just people just doing verses all it's over the features, place. features, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one is a hot take, and we will debate this one a lot. It's wrong. Uh, Death by a Thousand Cuts does not have uh a um what did i say does not have a bridge a bridge bridge. and that's just it's wrong there's no way that's not a bridge it's it's a very long bridge i i can make the argument for both sides but i think there's no way that's a verse that's not a verse i i think it's so the reason that it ends up going that way is because uh the song goes it, it actually is very interesting the song goes intro then it goes chorus. So it's like, as you can see, all of the songs aside from Endgame start, usually start with verse. Mm-hmm. I think this and Endgame are the only two songs on this list that do not start with the verse. So it goes chorus, verse, chorus, verse, post chorus, outro. And there's, so there's some debate here with this one. I fall on, I actually, as much as it pains me to say it, I don't think it, uh, the, my heart, my hips, my body, my love, I do not think that is a, a bridge and Devin disagrees with me, but the, the reasons that I, that have swayed me over to the side is one, if that is a, if that is a bridge, this song has one verse, which is just it's feasible. possible. It's yeah. possible, but it's just very unlikely. Uh, and it, and it just feels like a weird flow. The other thing is, is by Devin's actual definition of a bridge is something that does not repeat. And the post, uh, post sometimes chorus, the post chorus for uh, this does repeat lines from the second verse or bridge. So um, I, I think it's I think it's up for debate. But as according to the date, the rankings that I have, it is one of the eight songs that does not have a bridge. Um, then what's August? August has a bridge. Yeah. Yeah, but then afterwards, what's that? Okay. Okay, no, you're right. That's a good point. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna then I'll just go. I'll cut that point, and that's the only one. Uh, False God uh, is verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, outro. It's nice to have a friend here, uh, out here showing you that you don't need a bridge to yeah. have one of the best songs in the world. Uh, is intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Peace, another another one, uh, is just verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Again, this is all according to to, oh, to So genius, genius is wrong. Genius is so wrong and I get so mad. They're not so wrong, but they're just not right. Because there's songs and I'm like, that's clearly a bridge. Or they extend the bridge for too long. And that's I'm like, that, that's not a bridge anymore. At that point, that's either like the pre-chorus that's being repeated. And like I get it because so, it's like like the whole I, thing with love story. Yeah. That is a, that, that it, whole thing is when a bridge, it, though, right? When it goes into Romeo Save Me, I've Been Feeling So Alone, I, I would not count that as a bridge. Really? 
Mm -hmm. What is it then? I think it's just well, the okay. So then, well, wait, wait, wait. That because I was gonna, I was gonna ask. All too well, you call me up again just to break me in a promise. Blah, blah, blah. When she goes into um, the second half of that quote, because here we are again. When I love you so, back. I think that's the vert or the chorus. Or the, it's it's no, so it's no, it's the um, plaid shirt days and nights when you made me your own, like that part. Um, hmm. Like there's there's. I think a, that's a verse. You think that's a verse? I I don't know, man. Like so. Here's the thing. So when I and time I time won't fly. It's like I'm paralyzed by it. I'd like to yeah. be my own self again, but I'm still trying to find it. You think that's a verse? Because there's because there's two here. There's like a couple here. Well, this this whole this that's the thing with all too well. It is so nuts. Like because you call me. Uh, maybe we got lost in translation. Maybe I asked for too much. Mm -hmm. But maybe this thing is a massive. I will say that is three lines, and most of the. Uh, most of the um, verses are four lines mm -hmm. in All Too Well. So maybe we got lost in translation. Maybe I asked for too much. It's, it it's could such, be a post. That's a, that's a post chorus. I'll say that. That's a post chorus. I, I think these topics are just, there's so much debate that can there go is. into them and artistic choice and how you define things. Because I remember freshman year, before I was even a music major, I took music appreciation and she was talking about the different types like verses and choruses and what makes a pre-chorus and what makes a bridge and I kept remember I was she asked one of our assignments was to structure a song and I picked a Taylor Swift song and I was like she was like pick an easier song because this and I was like but you have to tell me and she's like well technically that could be like a pre-chorus thing or a refrain and it like it's a Cato that revisits a certain part in a song and I was just like what does this mean it's just it's such an interpretive thing mm. but I don't know all too well is one of those songs like just like peace that it feels like a bridge it it feels like it's longer than it is I don't know it, I, I just feel. I just like, don't think. I think genius tries their best, but I don't think. I think it's up for interpretation. It's it's hard because there's no like definitive website mm -hmm. to do something like that. So. And you know Taylor Swift can do whatever she wants. She can, yeah. At the end of the day, and she, if she wants to put two it. bridges in a song, she could put two bridges in a song. She's if she wants it. to cool. end a song with a bridge, anyway. Um, so according to this data that I that I pulled, it is interesting mm -hmm. to note that from Fearless to 1989 every single song from those albums and in everything in between has a bridge. Every single one. Uh, Lover has the most songs without a bridge, including Death by a Thousand Cuts uh, at three. It still has the most uh, number without a bridge tied with reputation if you count Death by a Thousand Cuts uh, with two. Um, so those are like, those are the, the interesting things. We didn't go into bars counting like 140 song bars of 140 bridges is a lot no i i wanted to but i was just sitting in my room like doing the four four count in the air and i'm like i hate my life one i hate <laughs> my life two i actually have this like i don't know if you can see this on the on the thing but i actually have like you know those um clickers clickers that they do they use it like amusement parks to like mm -hmm. know how many people are coming in like i have one of those and i was trying to do it with that still a nightmare Still oh an absolute gosh. nightmare. Um, so maybe that's something we'll do and we'll include down the line. Um, but it was just too much of an undertaking to get done before uh, before this week's episode comes up. So I wanted Joe and I to try to categorize the bridges. And mm. I was trying so hard to figure it out. <laughs> you want to see my, what I originally categorized them as? What did you Let originally me go to like the real ones? Let me see if I can pull up the actual verbatim what you I You had, had Ranting Bridge as one. Yeah, because I, that was the only one I 100% knew. I had Ranting Bridge. I had Rhyming Couplet because in her first album, a lot of her bridges were very short and they were just a poignant two-line uh, two piece that rhymed. I had a Long Story Bridge, which is just the bridge is very long and it tells a story. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say the worst one for last. Uh, I also had yeah, story bridge, story bridge, and then yeah, I had stretched word singing. 
also known as legato. Yeah, so I kept saying this, and I was like, there's got to be a word for this, because, like, clearly this mine isn't one. But basically, there are, like, there are bridges she has where she just, like, it's not a lot of actual lyrics or no depth of lyrics. It's just, like, uh, for instance, the outside, the quote-unquote bridge, according to Genius, is, oh, yeah. That's it. Which I think then includes, like, the, the bridge more comes from the instruments. Yeah, the, it's still a notes. bridge. It's just it's not... A, it's just not what we... A lyrical from bridge from yeah. her. Yeah. It's still... Oh, str- yeah. Stretch word singing was, like, a lot of, like... I think Haunted was the big one, where the bridge is, I know... Like, that... Mm-hmm. It's just her elongating her vowels and, like, making the words stretch. Yeah, it's a long, mixture... For the measures. A mixture of legato and just holding notes out longer yeah yeah um so those were the, what my classifications of her bridges so are, which are very simplistic i was looking more so so towards like how they function like in terms of narrative like mm. what they provide to a song a much and, better categorization so i found this great video on youtube i'm gonna shout it out uh by internet jewels so i didn't write down the name of the video because i'm awful but basically i Something about explaining Taylor Swift's bridges. So she categorized all of Taylor Swift's songs. Here or there, she mentions that some of them she couldn't fit into these boxes, and there's definitely more, but into these three categories of different twists in the song. And she calls them Taylor twists, which I love. So she talks about TT, Taylor twists. TTTM? What's the M? No, just TM, trademark. Oh, trademark. Taylor Twist trademark. Yes. So she talks about how the first one is this resolved narrative. So it's where an action takes place in the bridge that changes the narrative of the story and it gives you some present moment information that resolves something. So in Fearless, um, the first kiss is the action that solidifies and resolves the narrative of, okay, well, they ended up together. Mm. Uh, And it kind of reframes it that way. Betty, he actually shows up at her doorstep. White Horse was kind of the debatable one where she actually leaves the town. She's looking at him through her rear view mirror. Love Story, he actually proposes, kneels to the ground, pulls out the ring, which is debatable if you count that as the bridge. Um, Then you have the second... Um, Taylor twist that she has is that there is something that happens that you realize the story was always different than what it originally seems like and it just reframes and clarifies the narrative so a great example of this is the last great American dynasty you have the story about Rebecca Harkness and you're like okay great this is a song about this random woman cool and then you find out that Taylor owns the house that she used to live at and then that reframes the entire story and gives you it is nuts like that line and then it was bought by me is just mm-hmm. so innocuous but like it it really does like the it impact it has like, it feels like a meteor hitting mm-hmm. that you can see the impact just happening and changing everything you get in you get in it's chills yeah mm-hmm. you have invisible string talking about how i was always tied to you these you know chains around my demons wool to brave the seas and she points out brilliantly that they're all made of some kind of string and i sent that to joe i'm like that's brilliant yeah that is really good that's a really good point so it's just this single thread uh single thread of string always tied me to you and that just reframes it because you're talking about how in the verses of the song she had her life he had his life isn't it crazy there's these kind of coincidences but it reframes it by saying we were always meant to find each other in the string of fate then you have getaway car and it talks about how um took the money in the bag and stole the keys that was the last time you ever saw me just reframing that str- song of we didn't end up together i end up leaving i'm getting away then we have the third and last taylor twist is just this authentic desperate emotion um the lyricism provides such concrete details that re- reveals there's just too much truth to the song to cause this emotional reaction, aka the gut punch, which I'm going to argue is my favorite type of bridge out of the three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think out of all three of these, like, there's something, there's something really cool about the story was always different. There's, like, that fun turn and twist, Mm -hmm. uh, like an M. Night Shyamalan kind of bridge. Um, But the gut punch, like, I mean, if you look at her, her list, there's all clearly some of our favorites. 
uh, all the ones that are actually bridges, they're all some of our favorites. The 5,000 thoughts <laughs> is included in there. Just the, my heart, my hip, my body, my touch, trying to find a part of me you didn't take up. Yeah, it's just all that kind of stuff. The details are insane. Cruel Summer, her being drunk in the back of a car, crying, the actual, I don't want to keep secrets to keep you, uh, sneaking in, stuff like that. Just concrete the Cruel detail. Summer, there's like, there's like a, a I miss when I first heard that song mm -hmm. because I would listen to that bridge and the, he looks up grinning like a devil. Like that part, I, I'm not even joking. I transcended reality. Like whenever that part, came. I'm not joking. Like I know <laughs> it sounds like I'm over exaggerating. Like I was laying in my bed and I'm just like, my mind is absolutely destroyed. And to go back, I've, I've listened to it so much now that I've numbed to it, but like to go back and have that feeling again of hearing that for the first few hundred times and not feeling that and not like being numb to it, just like mm -hmm. having it wash over you. Like it's, it is, it's that gut punch. It's so visceral yeah like oh and then other examples include all too well and illicit affairs i won't get into them you just know that they're gut punchers yeah so yeah. those are the three different kinds of bridges that she points out i tried to categorize all of them i, I tried but it seems like she started to do this a little bit more recently or even just starting with fearless and speak now just because self-titled i tried to categorize them and i'm like it gets it gets very tricky the the speak or the self-titled bridges are very cookie cutter mm -hmm. um i don't think they're taylor swift bridges they're just they're like tim mcgraw is probably the closest one like you see like you see like bits and pieces of what is to come like mm -hmm. like it's, you see through the cracks of this i'm just trying to get my voice heard yeah and then once she gets her voice heard she just breaks that mold and you get into fearless which is just like the like so we can start talking about our favorites and our and our runner-ups like love story was the first one that jumped to my mind when we talked about this because i to me i don't know if it's the first one she's ever written but it's the first one that like mainstream bridge that everyone mm -hmm. heard and like changed not to like sound like ridiculous but changed the game like it did mm -hmm. like she came in with love story and just like broke the mold and you were like, all right, this is Taylor Swift. More, more so, this is Taylor Swift's Bridges. And you ask anyone about Love Story, and that is the first thing. That, that's the first lyric they know is yeah. that he knelt down and pulled the Mary, out. Yeah. Even like the TikTok video was mm -hmm. that whole thing was it all started with that bridge. And then we get You Belong With Me, which is like the sequel to that bridge. Like it, they, it's like we said, like there are so many that do the same thing, but like that's what it is. Like You Belong With Me is almost the exact same style of bridge of love story mm -hmm. um so before we continue on so these are our runner-ups honorable mentions we're going to get into our like top five ish later uh don't i mean you can come at us for these opinions but please there's, do honestly there's some, please do there's some of them that joe likes a little bit more than me there's some that i like a little bit more than joe and we're gonna we're gonna get we're into them. We're so gonna we're are, gonna rattle yeah. them all off. We we did narrow down a bunch. Like I said, we had like thirty or so, probably our, more yeah. than thirty. Uh, and I think our, we narrowed it down to just our our runner ups. Then we have our debated like twenty top sixes. Jesus. Um, and then we had the top five that was we yes. had to do it unanimously. That was mm -hmm. our rule. Like if if one person wasn't feeling that bridge, it had to go off. The top five had to be our unanimous. Um, so like I said, we started, we're going to go in, in album order. Tim McGraw was the closest from self-titled that might be it, but we both didn't even consider it. So we started with, um, fearless Yes. with you love story. You belong with me. So a great honorable mention that breaks my heart that I, I pers I think it's a bridge, but by definition of it doesn't connect you to anything with maybe an outro, but not really is the other side of the door. It's, it's so funny to me because like me and Devin bonded over this bridge since the start of this podcast. And it's so funny because it was like, I, I mentioned this when we, were, when we were talking about it, but like it, it was unprompted. It wasn't mm -hmm. like, it wasn't like, you know what you should listen to? It was just like, oh yeah, that bridge like sent me to another level. And I'm like, oh my God, I know exactly what you're talking. Like we, it was just something we both innately had this love for this random song and random outro bridge. And it is a sin that it is not included here. If 
if we do define it as a bridge, I think it would be in our top five. I agree. I, I mm -hmm. hands down, it would be in our top five. So don't come at us if you yeah, think, so oh, how did you not include the others out I, of the door? We want I, to. I'm so in, I'm so curious because like it is like like I said, it was this weird beacon between the two of us, two Swifties, that this song again, it's not a popular song. It's it's as close to a B side on an album as you can get, mm -hmm. and like, isn't it isn't it on a, isn't it a bonus track? Like it's not even, it wasn't even originally on Fearless. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. I'm so Bonus curious track. if you are a Swifty, obviously listening to this podcast, I hope you are. How do you feel about the other side of the door? Like comment, send us a DM, something. Mm -hmm. Is it a bridge? Is that outro a bridge? And do you feel strongly about it? I need to know if we're weird. <laughs> I don't think we are. Anyways, um, uh, the next song, The Way I Loved You. Which I admittedly get confused with the other side of the door all the mm -hmm. time. <laughs> <laughs> it's that he can't see the smile I'm faking. Oh my god, it's so good. I think uh, it's good. Not one of my tops, but I, I think that's definitely one of me. Like mm -hmm. I, I kind of put that one on there. Uh the next one is mine, which I think is like is the literal sequel to Love Story. Like mm -hmm. the bridges are just so similar in the way that they're made up, the the lyrics that they they provide, like they're almost like they're almost identical. It's um, the narrative of, okay, the guy reveals that he loves the her. Guy, the guy does like the, yeah, he, he shows does the up. thing. Yep. Yeah. He, he shows up in the rain or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of when sparks fly, I put the twins cause they're also like, they're just very similar. I, I always mm -hmm. think of them together. Um, one that was another one that I fought for was the story of us. Um, it was very hard. Yeah. Speaking of it's just my favorite album. So like it was very hard to not fight for every <laughs> bridge on this <laughs> on this album. Uh so Story of Us was huge. Enchanted. This is me praying that. Yeah. I think this is an interesting one because Enchanted isn't a lyrical bridge. It's very much a uh the emotion from the music. And like you get one very powerful line or one mm -hmm. very powerful couplet of just this is me praying that do you um this is the very first kiss or, or um my thoughts will echo your name until I see you again yeah it's it's a condensed bridge because she just said like like we've been saying a lot recently mm -hmm. she says so much by saying so little and like every single word has a that's punch the there. emotional gut punch yeah yeah. Uh, then another one that I fought for, I'm sorry, I fought for everyone on Speak Now that I could. I just, I think this, I think Fearless was her letting her bridges into the world. And I think Speak Now, of the album that she wrote entirely by herself is her saying, check these out. <laughs> like, look, look at how good I can be. Uh, long live. Uh, like, what, what do you say more about, like, to me, it's, Devin, I don't think is, is as high on the song I as I am. Long live as much as I probably should have, and that's why I don't have a strong opinion about it. I have, I have like some very weird personal ties to the song that I really like. But the bridge, like I love when she does a reminiscent bridge, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I guess, another category. But like you see it in All Too Well, you see it in Last Kiss, you see it in Long Live, like a very like the story's all over and we're looking back on on what we were kind of thing. I love those kinds of bridges. Um, <laughs> then we go to the next album. <laughs> and I made a really smart comment. <laughs> and this is just the song Red. Of course. Uh, the song Red on the album Red, the album of so many bridges, you wonder if it was structurally smart to build a city on a series of so many islands. <laughs> this, I, it's funny, we don't actually mention a lot from Red. I think this is the old, we narrowed every other one down because I think it was one of those cases of this bridge has been done before and better in certain instances, but every bridge on red is still like we think about it when we we put them on and we, as we were narrowing them down and like we were like bopping along and like mm -hmm. like really feeling them red it's just hard to it's hard to narrow down they're all so good and we didn't want to just include all of them so we just really boiled it down i think red was the one that we picked aside from our top five top six you'll see mm -hmm. some more red in there well, well let's get into the next song itself out of the woods that joe didn't even want to include at first and i said joe i will fight you tooth and nail this is definitely top 10 the amount of people that agree with me that's fair yeah that's fair. just I, out of the woods just isn't my song um you know me if you've listened to this podcast for uh however long you know i'm not a big 1989 person um I, don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. like, again, everything Taylor has ever put out is the on the upper mm -hmm. echelon of all music. 
but for me 1989 i'm definitely fall in the first four albums Mm -hmm. not the not the last four so i just don't have the connection to it out of the woods i mean it's a great it is a great bridge it it, it provides the details that you know this is a real story Mm. it it's a great song it's one of my favorite songs from 1989 which isn't which again isn't many um well, the next song. The next one is actually a rare wreck. I, this is one for me. Uh, I didn't think about it, but I wish you would. Uh, and I agree 100% on this. I, which, is, which shocked me, honestly. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to have to fight for it. No. Um, it's, there's something about it. I don't know what it was. It's, it's not even a song I, I don't think about it very often. I never think about I Wish You Would. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, no, the bridge on I Wish You Would is just, just bops. It's just really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, don't don't blame me. Is the only uh, song we have on from Reputation, and Devin actually uh, scalded me. Uh, he didn't hardcore. have it on there. Yeah, I didn't have it on there initially. I'm also not a rep. Like I said, the not- whole gospel, the, just the oh Lord save me when all the instruments cut out and you just hear that. How is that not top it's, tier level? For it's you? so that's, funny. That's because- one moment that changed my life. Devin, me and Devin were going through listening to all these songs and like she said don't blame me and I'm like yeah, is it though like because to me it was it I'm reading all the lyrics and I'm like oh, the lyrics aren't really that great like there's nothing like that stands out and then I was like wait if it's the if it's the part of the song where she just belts out like Ariana Grande and it's like the only time I think in her whole discography we really hear her like her pull that Mariah Carey Ariana Grande, like, like run. Yeah. Sure, that'll be it. And then as soon as it started playing, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> we're going there. Uh, and yeah, so that it's so funny. You like it for the beginning of that part. Mm-hmm. I like it for the end. I think the end is such an exclamation point. Um, definitely. Yeah. Um, then, then we on go to in, lover. Lover. The only one we have from here is I think he knows, which I think is interesting. I just think the cadence of that bridge and just the the contrast it provides is wonderful for me. It's it's one of my secret favorite songs on that album. Yeah. Like there are like it's one of the ones I don't think it's talked about enough. When we were doing our song breakdowns for that album, Rip. it was one I was so excited to get to, mm-hmm. and we never did. Um, Thanks, but... folklore. <laughs> one day, one day mm-hmm. we'll get back to it. Uh, but no, I think he knows definitely, definitely up there for me. And then from folklore, we have Cardigan, which yes. is another, a ranting bridge, a return to the ranting bridge that I don't think we've had since. Like, I don't. Do we have any ranting bridges in 1989? Reputation, Lover, I love her. We did, mm-hmm. but I, I feel like it was definitely something that kind of went on the wayside when she went full pop. Um, but those are just a long list of of our unanimous songs yes so now we're gonna get into our like number sixes but here's the thing i have three songs i rank them from eight to six i need to give two of these songs just particular shout outs because i think i would get yelled at if i didn't and i love them so much joe i think also likes them but one, one not as much as i do but dress is in my top 10 that is probably the, like, it's funny because that's on, like, all of the top bridges. Mm-hmm. Like, whenever I search, like, what are the top bridges of Taylor Swift songs, that one's always on there. It doesn't do much for me. <sighs> I think it's good. Don't get me wrong. But, like, in the echelon of what we've just talked about, it's just not really. I think I think when we were going through this, I was like, I can do it without dress. And you were like, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Like, you, you like. Slander. For that one. Yeah. Dress slander. It's uh, just not, not me. But. And then the next one, which would be, I guess, my number seven, is August. Yeah. Which and Joe I, I can't forgot blame about. I actually completely forgot about August. I, I wasn't was like, really focused on folklore. Like, Joseph, you cannot <laughs> forget August. Yeah, no, you're really right. Like, it's, it's definitely up there. It's definitely top ten for me. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's okay. get into number six now. So you had a tie for yours. I had a tie for my number six, um, which is absolutely none of the ones that you had. Uh, number, but it's so hard, but Treacherous mm-hmm. sends me to another level. Treacherous like, is one of my favorite songs. It's definitely in the top 10, but yes. It's like, it's, a, it's another one of those sleeper songs that mm-hmm. like, you, you don't, it's, when you think of Red, you don't immediately think of Treacherous, mm-hmm. but, or at least most people, I yeah. would assume most yeah. people don't. 
Um, but for me, it's just been such a standout track on that thing. And then the two headlights shine and mm-hmm. like that part just sends you to another level. And then a, n- not a lyrical one, but definitely a gut punch one that like got me through a lot in high school is breathe. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Fearless, just that it's 2 a.m. And this is actually the one because I remember this is an E minor bridge mm-hmm. because I played it on guitar a lot in high school to get over some bad feelings. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, like I remember switching. It's, it, I believe it is E minor that it switches to. And that just, it's just like you get mm-hmm. so much emotion and you just really, if you're not screaming, it's 2 a.m. when you're listening to Breathe, like we can't be friends. Like I'm yes. sorry. Um, and yours is actually pretty close to a tie for me too. My number six is back to December. Cause I think there's two other songs in our top five that do a similar thing that back mm-hmm. to December does. I think they do it slightly better, but back mm-hmm. to December is still fantastic. Okay. So that was our top six. So we're going to get into our top five. Let's just get the elephant out of the room here. Everyone knows what our number one is. If so, you've listened to this podcast before, you, you know, yeah what our number one is. <laughs> if you even listen to the beginning of the episode where we spent like at least three minutes talking about this one song you know what our number one is um but we can start going uh we'll go let's five. say it no no uh, we, okay maybe they don't know maybe they guess wrong who knows right. um number five is illicit affairs yes it came out of nowhere and mm-hmm. we wouldn't stop to, like it was the thing that reinvigorated our bridges like when we when we were listening to folklore it just brought back the the memories of the taylor swift bridge of the mm-hmm. the famous one that we just love it has an emotional impact it gives you this clarification that um internet jewels talks about it pretty well like you think it's oh it's a song about affairs oh okay whatever this is fine this is fun it's flirty and then you just get to this bridge where she talks about how she just this emotional manipulation like don't call me kid don't call me baby you've made me this godforsaken mess and you're just like oh (laughs) like it just provides this different context so uh, a funny thing about illicit affairs uh my friend sent me this uh lord uh, sees color in music. Mm. Uh, so you showed me colors you've never seen before. And uh, Jack said, yeah, this song just really hit close to home. I right. bet it did, Jack. I bet it did. Sorry. Just Thanks. going back to that long-running gag now that we have. <laughs> yes. Then we have number four, which might be a hot take for some people, but I think it's definitely up there for us. I don't know. In terms I, of top four, I don't know. I think so. Uh, what is it? Our number four is Wildest Dreams. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, like, the Lana Del Rey song, uh, it's uh, You See Me in Hindsight. Uh, that's not it, is it? You just sang Wildest Dreams, not Lana Del Rey. I don't know what right. you were trying to do. Okay, no, I was saying, I, I, for some reason, I just, like, got in my head, and I was like, wait, You See Me in Hindsight, I've tangled up with you all night. That's not Wildest Dreams. What no, it I is. Doing? I made a fool of myself. No. Now I've made an even bigger fool of myself by double-guessing myself. <laughs> um yeah no that that one i i don't know do you really think that's a hot take i think some people would be disappointed on i don't know because i think i honestly think um out of the woods is higher for most people really? than it is for wildest dreams i i would disagree solely on the fact that wildest dreams is a single so it's more mm. more widely known than yeah. out of the woods out of the woods is more of like I, a, a swifty cut yeah if you're a swifty you probably go wildest uh, out of the woods especially if you're a 1989 swifty mm-hmm. um i'm not yeah and, and i think and wildest dreams is one of my favorite songs full stop like not even just yeah. on 1989 like wildest dreams i think is one of the best things that come out of 1989 so that one just gets me mm-hmm. then our number three is cruel summer obviously a cultural the bridge reason. the bridge that was too powerful to be released as a single she oh. just couldn't unleash that for us the summer she couldn't do it that was like, there was a meme going around that's like, everyone said, all Swifties saying like, August is going to be the next single. And then Swifties remembering that Cruel Summer, they thought was going to be the next single and it never got a single. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, they're all like panicked about it. Uh, yeah, no, Cruel Summer, like I said, like, it was just one of those things when that album came out, it, the song itself is flawless. Mm-hmm. Um, the bridge is transcendent. It's yeah. just 
it's just another level. Um, what I think is actually interesting too is at least like most of these songs are in our like probably our top fifteen Taylor Swift songs. Also. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. If not top ten, like mm-hmm. which is really interesting. Like it's, I, I, I don't know, but yeah. Anyway, uh, what is our number two? Our number two for those of you who are like, how the hell are they ranking? Number two is Last Kiss. I don't, I think Do you think this, I think this would house, be a hot take. I think this would be a hot take. It might be a hot take, but it's honestly in my top five, just normal Taylor Swift songs. I and, think it's three for me. I think it's three. I think it just, goes all too well. Uh, just the lyrical the, content of Last so Kiss. Good. If that doesn't get you if that if you don't draw, that's not even a gut punch that's like a that's a that's a suplex that's like they pick you up and they throw you into the ground uh but not only do they throw you into the ground they throw you into the ground in that way that like 1950s women would like fall in distress like the uh, like, hand over like that like that's how they throw you into the ground with last you're kiss. already on the song with last you're you're on the floor with last kiss you're oh, already yeah. crying you're done and then the floor drops like, out from underneath you that's what happens like like it's just it's so you i don't want to call it a gut punch because it's not they literally rip your heart out like it's so emotional <laughs> like I have been single for three years and never, I have not had a, a, any kind of heartbreak in forever. I listened to Last Kiss to remember what it's like to feel. Like, I, there is not a single time that I can put Last Kiss on and not get emotional. Like, no matter what state I'm in, if that song comes yeah. on, it's over for me. You and just that, have and an, a sad and day. The thing is, is if, you're like, if you're like doing like emotional, like, like, daredeviling like you're like okay i can i'm fine i'm in a great emotional spot let me just brave through last kiss real fast oh first first kind of tough but we made it through chorus mm, getting tough but we still there second yeah. verse no problem i'm through and through bridge <laughs> and then you're just crying not even crying you're just fetal Weeping. position in the shower <laughs> You're you're so biased. You're not even weeping. You're just arrested development, just like biting onto his pants and just crying in the shower. Like it's it's so insane. Mm -hmm. And we we have to figure out a way to do an episode about this. But like, I'll float this in in our episode right now. We truly believe that Last Kiss is the building block that gave us all too well. We think, or at least I do. I don't Mm -hmm. know if you actually share that with me, but like. There is something about Last Kiss that it just feels like the precursor to All Too Well. Mm-hmm. And which is perfect because number one is All Too Well, if you didn't imagine. Welcome that. to We Need to Calm Down. We're yeah, an All we're, Too Well podcast. We're an All Too Well bridge Taylor Swift podcast. Those are the three things that we cover on a daily basis. But um, I just feel emotionally tuckered out talking about those top five. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of get, I kind of just want to play guitar and sing along and cry for a little bit thank god well, i have to take a shower so i'm gonna be <laughs> curled up in a ball crying now um yeah so I, I don't think there's much we can say on all too well that we haven't already said before bridge is insane wherever you think the bridge starts and ends mm-hmm. um it the whole song honestly could be a bridge at this point she could tell us we could just turn around and be like it all it all was always was um it was all a bridge always it was all a bridge um so I, I don't think we need to go any further on that, but I think we can uh, we can close up. Uh, anything you want to say in closing about bridges? Bridges are such a, it's a delicate, weird thing to interpret, but if Taylor Swift is known for anything, I think she is known for her bridges. I think it's one of her, her de facto, like, mm-hmm. stamps of a, of a song, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited to get into the other ones that are less known and learn a little bit more about verse structure, chorus structure, re- what a refrain is, what a breakdown like definition wise is. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited to learn a little bit more about other song structures and different Taylor stuff. We can also, we can even do guitar solos, like just music mm-hmm. stuff that stands out to us. Um, I'm excited for this series. I think this is the perfect way to kick this series off. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you guys have any uh, any extra ones or anything you want in the series, or if you guys think of an, a series like this, shoot us a comment, shoot us a DM, let us know 
um we're still come up with different content to kind of show you guys so if there's something you guys have an idea for uh let us know we'd love to just throw it on our docket and just keep riding this out yes and please tell us what your favorite bridges are tell us if we got it completely wrong completely right if we had any hot takes if you had some hot takes yourself please let us know i would just love to see what other fans are saying about her songs and her a hundred percent a hundred especially like especially that connection that, that we had with the other side of the door mm -hmm. um if you like what you hear be sure to give us a, a review and a five-star rating on apple tell a friend about us if you're a swifty and you have like a group of friends and you go to concerts with with her or anything like that the first person you text when taylor tweets like for me it's devin uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, tell them about us. It's the quickest way to help our podcast grow. Yes. And make sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to see our beautiful faces and backgrounds that I, for I forgot to change to the folklore background again, it's fine. It's whatever. Um, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram. We use mostly at we need to calm down podcast and Twitter. It's WNTCD podcast. Aside from that, uh, thank you so much for listening. We will see you next Typical Tuesday. Come back. We'll be here.